And we're off. Welcome to Night Hacking Interviews at the Java Land Conference. I'm here with Kirk Pepperdine, who I think it's only been a few weeks where we were skiing. Yes. In the um, Switzerland, no, no, not in Switzerland, and um, Swedish. And I and I Swedish gave you mountains. the I gave you the big uh, reindeer, yes. in, in the herd. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for choosing an appropriately sized reindeer for yeah, me. Yeah. So I mean, for people who might not understand that comment, um, uh, Steve nicely took a beautiful picture of all these reindeer at the top of the mountain. It was wonderful, and um, I stole the picture from him, posted it on my <laughs> Facebook page. And then all of the speakers that were there, I basically assigned uh, face recognition to <laughs> tag to each it, of the it reindeer. Was a, it was a clever, cl very clever use of um, <laughs> photo tagging I, in I, Facebook. I wonder how that's going to affect their photo tagging <laughs> algorithm. <laughs> yeah, we're all permanently poisoned. If there's a reindeer picture, they're going to attach our names to it. <laughs> yeah, that'll be it for sure. Immediately. That's quite fun. Um, so we're here at the Java Land Conference, and you're, you're giving a couple of talks, but one of them is on the G1 garbage collector? Actually, I just gave the talk on the G1 garbage collector. Oh, perfect. And perfect in, and in timing. True, true conference style, um, of course, the video didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so it was 20 minutes of speaking, actually, uh, without slides. Um, that's, that's probably Kirk Pepperdine at his best. I, well, I'm not sure if you want to inflict the audience with me without <laughs> slides. But anyways, it, it, was, it, was, it was quite an interesting talk. Mostly what we wanted to do is get to, um, uh, should I show you the interesting diagram? Yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah. Show I, that's interesting. So I'll, I'll pop to your desktop for a hold sec. On, hold on a second here because like, uh, yeah. Okay, let, let me get rid nice, of the advertising. Nice pictures of Crete on here, but... Okay. Yeah, so we have, uh, can I, uh, yeah, flip through slides, very rough. The audience didn't actually get to see this one because. Oh, yeah, okay. they missed this one. So, yeah, so what is the state of the G1? Is that what you went on? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, well, I, I figure at this point, we've chatted about this before on the live stream, but right. you've probably done enough, like, real world analysis at companies and projects and things with G1 that you actually have some data. Oh, I, no, no, I got some data. Yeah. We have data. Um, so here's some data. This, okay. this is sort of a simulation of a benchmark, right? So I, I took the Cassandra benchmark and I cranked it up so it's running at 100% uh, throughput, right? The mm -hmm. CPU is just burning 100%. So anything the garbage collector does is going to take away from application throughput. Yeah. yeah? So here's a whole bunch of data points in different configurations. Um, oh, that worked really nicely. The, the first one on the far left <laughs> should actually have had a circle drawn around it, but it actually didn't work. And it, that one is, is quite fun. It, that's, that's with the concurrent mark sweep collector. Okay. And I was looking at it going like, ah, that's an easy target. I'm a clever guy. I should be able to beat that easily. And if you look at every other data point, this is a throughput chart. If you look mm -hmm. at every other data point, data point, that's with the G1. So G1 untuned. And then G1 with different various tuning options based on all the analysis that we did. And yeah, did you see yeah. anything better than CMS there? No. That's where we are today. <laughs> <laughs> From an overhead point of view. I mean, to, I mean, to be fair, um, what this really means is that if you're going to run the G1 collector, you should have lots of CPU and mm. lots of memory to support it. Because when you start giving this thing adequate resources, then the performance picture uh, really shifts. But it suggests that the G1 collector really is a... Um, Sorry, Normie, I'm just... I high overhead. Yeah, okay, so, so to do the magic, which is all the great things G1 promises, there's a little bit of overhead. Yeah, there's yeah. a little bit of overhead, but if you have the hardware to support it, it it's looking pretty good. The lads are doing... A, pretty good job of adding more optimizations practically on a daily basis. So okay. any analysis I've done today is probably not going to be valid tomorrow. <laughs> it certainly won't be valid by the JD, when the JDK 9 is released. Oh, by yeah. the way, all of those numbers were JDK 9. Okay, nice. So, <laughs> not 8. <laughs> it's kind of fun, no? 
Yeah, yeah, OK. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, so good. that's a good update on, on G1 and the state of where things are. So the other thing which we wanted to chat about is you had a new version of Sensum to show. Yeah, yeah. So it's the, the, the same old boring thing, Sensum, <laughs> GC log analysis and everything. But uh, we started adding some analytics. Like, here's an interesting one, actually. Um, we have, uh, this is the first of a number of analytics we plan to add on this, on this area. But if you look at this, it's say, suggesting high kernel times. Unfortunately, it's kind of worked out. Well, I just showed off a bug in our new release. Thank you. Yep. Um, you have a problem. You should we take have a, a look. problem. You should take a look. Kernel times exceeded user times zero times in this log. So, um, really, um, that's not the way it's supposed to work because you don't have a problem in this situation. But if you look at the CPU time down here, mm -hmm. um, and sort of blow it up and everything, you can see that the red stuff is buried down there, and the green stuff is up there. That's good. But occasionally, what you do is you get systems where the red stuff is actually higher than the green. Okay, so help me with what red and green are. Red, red and is green system. Are, red is bad, green is good, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. So red is kernel. Yeah, yeah. And, and green is green user is time. your, your okay. actual application. Garbage collector is an algorithm running in user space. Mm -hmm. It should not be collecting red. Yeah. If the garbage collection threads are collecting red, something bad is happening in your system. And so okay, from so, this... Okay, so if you noticed a lot of red in your GC graph, what would that be indicative of? Well, there's a whole bunch of things that could be happening. It could be page swapping within the operating system. Okay, yeah. It could be uh, being bottlenecked on disk I.O. when you're writing the uh, perf data to the, uh, sl uh, the slash temp uh, directories, mm -hmm. right? So um, there could be page coalescing going on. Uh, it, this happens in Linux if you're using transparent uh, large pages. So basically, with the garbage collection data, we actually are able to infer problems in the running environment of the JVM. So we're not actually diagnosing things about the garbage collector with this data. Yeah. We're actually telling you what the state of the process is or the environment that, the, that, that your JVM is running in. There's other things we can do. Like if the green and the red are approximately equal to each other, then your garbage collection uh, is running single threaded. Oh, okay. yeah, okay. And there's, so there's, so when you look at the data this way, all of a sudden there's a whole bunch of different analytics that we can just run across this, and we can tell you all kinds of things about what's happening in your runtime. Nice. Environment. So that's a that's a new view in Sensum, which wasn't there before. It's a that's a yeah. I think it's a relatively new view. Yeah. Certainly the analytics are are different, and the, the other views. Are, we, we did a lot of work for the G1 to support it. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's all going to be redone for Java 9 because all the GC logs <laughs> are changing. But you can see here, these are heap percentage. Things. Uh, what's the interesting things? Yeah, yeah, phase percentages. Yeah, and that that looks pretty, doesn't it? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so the the key here, parallel is on top. Yeah, this so the this blue. is the parallel phases. Yeah, and we have the parallel phases broken out like this, so you can Got see it. what that's. <laughs> and, it, and it might look ugly, but really what the red says is that um, your uh, object copy times are dominating. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you run into this situation, then there's some things that you can do to try to mitigate uh, the effect of object copy times on the uh, on, yeah. on the pause yeah. time, and that's you know there's anyways there's a whole bunch of different views. Cool. We, so you could just you could just do a presentation where it would just be like a picture. You show a picture and you'd be like ah, oh. and this is this is what this shows you. And you show another picture. And actually, I do I I actually do uh, some um, jug talks and uh, other talks like that, which is like. People bring the garbage collection logs. We tell them beforehand, <laughs> bring a log. Bring a log. We'll put it up, and that will be the seed of a discussion about, one, what's going on in their application, in their application environment, and two, basically how this whole thing works, as well as maybe suggestions as to how we might, um, how they might start uh, tuning to get uh, better cool. performance out of things. So, yeah. and I, I, it's, so it's slide-free talk, and I think people really enjoy that. Well, especially if you're talking about their application. Like, I think the most common criticism of presentations is how does it apply to what I'm to working what on? what I'm working on, yeah. And if you're talking about their JC logs, it probably, at least one person in the room is really happy. I, I do, I'm just doing it because I'm lazy. I just don't like <laughs> writing presentations. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, um, laziness so is a good attribute for presenters as well. I, if I don't have to write the presentation and people are able to get something out of it, that's, you know, Double bonus, isn't it? Cool. 
Everybody. Okay, so I think it's time for lunch here at Java Lands. Are you? Yeah. We're not going to talk about what you're doing here? No, well, we, we could. I, I have my, well, have Sebastian's your, your motorcycle. Motorcycle over here. And, uh, here on the side of the stage. And, 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 and it was really a story to actually <laughs> figure out how you're actually going to get it up on the stage. How did, yes. you, how did you manage to do that? That's, yes. that's amazing. So we, we had fun with that this morning, but um, <laughs> we, we got a proper plank from the garbage bin outside <laughs> and we wiped it down so it was not a so it was a nice rough surface we could drive up on yeah and we just you know cranked the gas and popped cranked it and popped it right yeah. up on stage was, here and everything we should have we should have actually took in retrospect we should have taken a video or pictures of it while we were doing it uh, absolutely that would have been uh, well actually how do you plan on getting it off the stage well we could definitely take pictures of that i we, it's still discussion Still, we're still we're still engineering a solution to get the motorcycle back <laughs> off stage. Well, we're just hoping that the stage will support the weight. No, well, it it clearly does. It, Maybe it, not the 1600 I'm riding, but the right okay. the sport bike, the 650, which Sebastian's on is. So where's more your next stop, anyways? Uh, our next stop is uh, oh, Darmstadt. Really? Yes. Where the heck is that? So, somewhere south, south of here. Somewhere south of here. You're, you're challenging my my German geography. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to be doing that, do we? Yeah, yeah so, so we're gonna, gonna go to Germs Darmstadt, then we're gonna visit Michael Hoffer, who does 3D printing at the University of Frankfurt. Sweet. And then we're gonna go even farther south and visit Wolf Health, who was the um, uh, the artist who was here last year doing oh right doing the all visualization, the visualization the mind visualization, matrix. Yeah, right. And we did that for Java One too. That was really cool. Yeah, and the last big jug stop is um, visiting. Uh, Lake Bodense, which is Sven Reimer's Java user group. Wow. Around Lake Constance, and actually, um, the, he started the user group at the first night hacking tour two years ago. So this is a nice uh, repeat visit yeah, then, yeah. Yeah, they have a great little user group down there. How are you coping with the fact that every once in a while there's a bit of snow falling from the sky? Ah, oh, okay, so for, <laughs> folks, for folks who are, who are watching our little um, footage between <laughs> sessions, I have the snow recording on this, and I'm going to pop it up on screen later. Awesome. Yeah, so it, not too bad. It was mostly snow on the grounds, the roads were passable, and then lots of salt on the bikes. You can see the... Yeah, there's, yeah. there's, there's quite a bit of white stuff in yeah, everything. That's, like, that's the yeah. salt, so that's you weren't salt. worried about um, losing the grip. Yeah, exactly. So Excellent. not too bad. Well, we don't, we don't want you to lose grip. No, Otherwise no, we won't that have would be that would be like the unfortunate accident out here yesterday around Fantasia Land. The road was slippery and a biker went down. Oh, you're kidding! Yeah, it was oh, very it's unfortunate. Sad to see. Yeah. Very, very sad to see. Well, we don't want to end the talk on that note, do you? No, 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 no. We should, we should not <laughs> yeah, exactly. end the talk on that note. So, what's up next for you, Kirk? Me, actually, I'm going to do um, a two-day workshop at Oracle U in Bucharest. Oh, yes. It's yes. an expert summit. Um, normally, this is for database people, so I'm sort of one of the first uh, Java people to run through the program, and I'll have to say um, it's been interesting because, um, you know, unlike when you do talks and presentations at other places, you know, you working on your slides at the last minute, you got to yeah, yeah. create the PDFs, you distribute the PDFs. They actually want to do things like print things, which means you have to write your slides well in advance, and then you wow. can't change them afterwards. And that that might cramp your style. That's rather retro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's well, actually cramping their style because I'm having difficulty adapting. <laughs> well, I think Sorry I think say. it'll be I think it'll be a welcome change to have somebody who's like a performance tuning guru to kind of like attract a new audience to their event. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of surprising it's taken this long to integrate Java people into it, and I hope there's a lot more Java people yeah. that yeah. can actually um, get integrated into these events, because I think they're, they're, it looked, for me, the program looked kind of, so looking at it, going, oh, okay, this is actually quite fun. Looks yeah, quite good so there's a good opportunity there to... Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So we right, finished so the... I think we're, I think we're good. We got, off of, we got off that unfortunate okay. topic. Lunch. So, Lunchtime. Thank you very much, Kirk. Thank you very much, Steve. Appreciate the interview and <laughs> yeah. come back and watch more interviews right at the before the top of each hour here at Java Lands Conference.